Hello, my name's Mark. Welcome to Living La Dolce Vida. Well, good morning everybody and welcome back to Living La Dolce Vida. Uh, my name is Mark, for those who don't know, and if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, etc. You know, you know, most of you know the score by now. So, uh, just thought I'd give you an update on the plot. Okay, so uh, first, firstly, uh, hope you enjoyed the previous videos on my little jaunt to Crete. Uh, <laughs> Hope you weren't too bored with them. Um, as I say, they, they weren't necessarily uh, in day order or anything like that. Just, just some highlights of my trip there. Um, yeah, nice weather. It was all right. I, I, I wasn't overly enthusiastic about it, but there we are. It's a nice little break away from the, the uh, whatever. So, um, no, I think I'm, I am aware that I've put the the last video up twice for some reason. I was trying to put up some photographs but for some reason it's not working. I need to delete that uh, last video. Anyway, back to the plot. So, uh, came back after a weekend. Oh my goodness. The caterpillars have had a field day. These are okay because they were being covered with netting and I've just, I've only just taken the netting off now because they, they, uh, they're pushing up and they're getting constricted. These are um, Brussels sprouts, by the way. So I've put in some clover in here and mustard. Just mustard? I can't remember now. I think I might have put mustard and clover in here. Anyway, so I'm going to shortly I'll be weeding this little strip, get the, most of the weed out, and then run the wolf tool through it. So parsnips seem to be coming nicely. Plenty of runner beans. Um, as I say, uh, these are obviously gone too far for picking now, so I'll just leave those go to seed. Uh, as I say, I mostly I mostly grow them for seed rather than eating. I mean, I do eat some, of course. Um, and here's my my leeks, which I need to uh, weed through. I'm going to be wasn't, and be, beetroot, plenty of top growth. Um, I have, have to see. Start picking some if they're of the right size for me. Uh, Bolotti beans, I can see them coming through there, but they should be growing right up the poles. I don't know what's going on there. It's been really peculiar weather. It's stuffed like that clover it's just not thriving I don't know why it's not that it's cold or it's dry um, anyway courgettes once they get going oh my goodness look at all of these here <laughs> piles of them piles of them yeah that's gonna do as I say the um, asparagus is doing okay once as I said before, all, once all these tops have died back, then I can go through this and clean up the ground and um, all the, these will be coming up and then some will be transplanted and some will uh, go in my back garden and if i got any uh, left over I shall give away for those who want them. Right, fennel. Yeah. Seems to be okay. Plenty of rhubarb. Rhubarb's doing well now. This curly kale. I'm not going to bother with this curly kale next year. I'm not that overly impressed with it, i got to be honest. Um, Um, Calabrese, still hanging in there. 
I've already had a few, um, actually that one can come out now because I've had a couple of heads off them and been very good. So, uh, oh, here they are, look, caterpillars. So I'll give them, a, give them a nice hug and squeeze and get rid of them. People have been moaning and groaning about how badly they've been affected, but the trouble is they don't come down enough to go through all their crops. And that's all you got to do is keep squeezing them. Or get rid of them, or whatever. That's all you need to do. You can keep them top of them. It's just that I was away for a week, and of course, yeah. Right, so, a good crop of curly kale here. And I'm in the plants, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, <laughs> next year, I'm only going to grow three maybe four plants at the most pointless in growing I can't I can't eat all this and that's just seven plants so three maybe four plants would be plenty for me so this head is coming now nicely so we got some uh, well I think they went oh I'll go I can see a pile of Caterpillars, and I'll have to go through this now. Uh, some various cabbages, savoys, and I th these are other winter cabbages. They seem to be surviving. Why? Because these haven't been netted, and I don't understand why the, the caterpillars have left these alone. That is bizarre. Um, Swede, of course. Not sure how these are coming. How big? If they got any. Sweet corn, of course. Oh, there's a nice little head on there. Um, yeah, disappointed with the sweet corn. Uh, and my little experiment of planting these brassicas in between the sweet corn, uh, it's, it sort of worked, but and they sort of didn't. So I'm not, I won't do that again next year. Yeah, I'll just. You know, I'll just leave it as it is. Just the one plant. More balotti beans in there. You can see them coming. So I'll just have those for seed again, I expect. Green manures are coming. <coughs> uh, and the same here. So in here we got rye, mustard and uh, clover. So yeah, that'll all be. Uh, well, I'll just leave it for now, and I'll dig it in just before, because I'll be putting potatoes in here next year, and maybe in this patch as well. So that'll be dedicated to potatoes. We'll see. I'll see how much space I need. Um. My James Greaves apples are seeming okay, but I get, they're all right, but you tend to get this, um, oh, what do you call it, you know, blotching on it. They're all right, you can just cut that out, and they're okay underneath. But um, I think I will have to start a spraying regime. Not keen on it, but I think I have to do that. Otherwise, you just get a waste of apples. Yep, this is coming along nicely, so I have to start thinking about tying this in, taking out the, some of this growth. Now, this is um, horseradish. So I've just shoved him in there for the time being. So I'm hoping it, it'll come back after I've transplanted it. So I don't know. But, um, so as I say, now that I have given up this bottom plot, uh, I've still got my compost containers, I'm just waiting for that green shed to be moved and disappear, because I want to put um, a greenhouse up there eventually. And uh, 
Jeremy's been down here and he's, as I'm digging out my potatoes, he's slowly taking over the plot. Taking all the apples that were down there, a nice big box full of apples. And I've had a, not a particularly good crop of raspberries. I'll see if I can get a different variety next year, for, uh, for next year. Yeah. So... And this is starting to flower now. Nice, nice little head. Not quite sure what it's called. <laughs> Again, similar flower. Um, yeah, so if anybody knows what this is called, please leave a comment in the comments. Um, yeah. So the intention is to, at the head of each bed, put, or maybe every other bed, I don't know yet, put some sort of flowering plant like that just to make it look a bit pretty and hopefully bring in some pollinators because I very you know I rarely cultivate up to the that far up the, to the bed anyway so I might as well put something in there okay so uh, I don't want this video to go on too long um, so I hope you're all doing okay and uh, I think we'll call that quits now and uh, I'm going to do a little, this little bit of weeding and then I've got to start tidying up my garage. It's an absolute bomb site. <laughs> right, so I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.